November 30th, December 13th, New Style, The Memory of Saint Frumentius, Archbishop of Abyssinia, Ethiopia. At the end of the reign of Constantine the Great, a curious Christian merchant from Tyre named Miropius embarked on a journey to India and other countries along the shores of the Black Sea. With him were his two nephews, Frumentius and Odysseus. He took these young boys with him, intending to acquaint them with unknown lands, different natures, and customs of other peoples. While sailing, their ship was caught in a storm and driven to Ethiopia, inhabited by wild barbarians. The travelers were captured, some were killed, and others were drowned at sea. Meropius was slain, but his nephews Frumentius and Odysseus were spared and taken to the city of Axum as a gift to the Ethiopian king. The king favored both young men and decided to keep them at his court. Special overseers and teachers were appointed by the royal command to educate the young men, so that after their education they could be given positions at the court. Having been enlightened by the faith of Christ from their childhood, Frumentius and Odysseus quickly excelled in intellect and education among all those surrounding the king. They soon became prominent and influential figures at his court. Even greater honor came to them after the death of the king, when his underage son, Azan, ascended to the throne. Frumentius was chosen as Azan's educator. During this time, Frumentius and his brother, Odysseus, had significant influence over the entire country, allowing them to openly profess their faith. Trade connections with Ethiopia were established by some Roman and Greek merchants, most of whom were Christians. Odysseus and Frumentius met with these traders and organized worship gatherings. They even built a small church for these gatherings. Gradually, the Ethiopians learned about the Christian faith from Frumentius and Odysseus, who lived out their beliefs in their daily lives. Azan grew older and at that time Frumentius and Odysseus asked the king's permission to return to their homeland. Azan, after some hesitation, allowed them to leave Ethiopia. Odysseus, upon arriving in Greece, went to his homeland in Tyre, seeking his parents to never be separated from them again. However, Frumentius had different intentions regarding Ethiopia. He had grown deeply attached to the country, which, according to God's providence, had become his second home. He ardently desired that Ethiopia would become spiritually related to him as well. Therefore, Frumentius chose the higher spiritual joy over the joy of reuniting with his family, consecrating the Abyssinian Church to Christ. Inspired by such holy thoughts, Frumentius headed to Alexandria instead of Tyre, where Saint Athanasius the Great was the bishop, an ardent defender of the Church of Christ. Upon reaching St. Athanasius, Frumentius detailed everything he had experienced with Odysseus in Abyssinia, starting from the miraculous providence of their captivity among the barbarians who brutally massacred Meropius and other Christians. He explained to the great hierarch that these barbarians were no longer hostile to Christians and even delved into their way of life and teachings. Now they could easily be enlightened by the light of Christ's truth. The ground was prepared, and the country thirsted for a sower. Therefore, Frumentius fervently asked the bishop to send a bishop and clergy to Ethiopia immediately. Saint Athanasius understood the wonderful providence of God in the fate of these brothers, aimed at converting the Ethiopians to Christ. At that moment, the thought illuminated him that it is best to appoint Frumentius to be the bishop there, as he managed to learn everything about the way of life, traditions, and the language in that land, and to earn love and respect there. Blessed Athanasius then said to Frumentius, Who among us is better than you to dispel the darkness of paganism and bring the dawn of divine evangelism there? After this, Frumentius was ordained bishop by St. Athanasius, and with apostolic zeal and eagerly set out again to Ethiopia to enlighten the pagans. Above all, he persuaded King Azang himself to accept holy baptism. 
The young king, accustomed to Frumentius's advice and inwardly inclined to his teacher's faith, listened to his preaching about the risen one with sincere faith and was baptized in the name of Christ. Many of the king's close associates were also baptized. The Lord honored this equal to the apostle's servant with the gift of miracles. Saint Frumentius, through the power of Christ's name, healed the possessed and those afflicted with various ailments. As for those who stubbornly denied Christ's teachings and refused to believe in the good news of Saint Frumentius, he surrendered them to the power of Satan, that the spirit may be saved, as stated by the apostle's words. As for others who perished, he struck them with a drought of their entire bodies and brought blindness upon their eyes. Even the most obstinate of pagans, seeing these sudden and terrible signs, bowed before him. They confessed Christ as the Son of God, received healing from Frumentius, and were baptized. The people marveled at the power of the preacher's message, and even the king involuntarily exclaimed, You lived with us for so many years, and we did not see any miracles from you. From where has such grace come now, and that in such a short time? Blessed Frumentius replied to the king and all those around him, This is not my gift, honorable friends of Christ, but the gift of priesthood from the Lord Christ himself. I have seen your good intention and readiness to accept Christ for a long time. Therefore, leaving my homeland and disregarding my family ties, I, obedient to the voice of the Lord, went to Alexandria and told about your spiritual thirst to the great Athanasius, the high priest of the Church of Alexandria. He ordained me as a bishop, and, enlightened by apostolic grace, sent me to you with prayers and blessing. This sacred gift of God, through me, performs among you, who have accepted the word of the gospel with faith, those miracles you witness. Thus Frumentius laid the foundation of the Church of Christ in Ethiopia. He zealously cared for its external and internal organization, building churches for the newly converted throughout the country and establishing worship everywhere. He also took care of translating the Holy Scriptures into the Ethiopian language. After this translation, the preaching of the gospel spread even more successfully in Ethiopia. Saint Frumentius lived many years, godly, setting an example and instructing the believers in the observance of God's commandments. He peacefully departed to the Lord around the year 360, leaving the Ethiopian church firmly established. From his venerable relics, various healings flowed ceaselessly to all who approached him with faith and supplication, to the glory of our true God, Christ. Amen.